Alright, what's going on, Ronan MMA? Welcome back to the channel. Now, this is going to be my instant reaction to the UFC 287 press conference that just took place maybe about a half an hour ago. I'm going to go over some key moments um, or questions that were asked that I thought were noteworthy. Then I'm going to touch on the face-offs a little bit, and yeah, that's about it. But before we do, please like and subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate it, okay? I think about 58%, maybe it was 56.2 or something like that percent of my regular viewers are not subscribed. I would greatly appreciate it. Whoops, if you could just subscribe. I'll thank you in advance because I'm Canadian, eh? and Canadians are polite. So anyways, let's just get right into it, okay? First of all, dude, I want to apologize if there are any WWE fans. WWE, yeah, two of them, WWE fans in my audience, uh, because you may be slightly offended by this or whatever, but I want to give a public service announcement to the MMA media members, none of which will see this, but it's worth saying anyways, um, stop asking about WWE when we're here for what is possibly the most anticipated fight in middleweight history in the UFC, K. Okay? We don't care. And they keep trying to justify the questions. They, they'll word it in such a way where it's, oh, well, the fans want to know what will this mean for whatever. No, we don't, dude. None of us care about that. You asked every single fighter that already at Media Day. Enough. Okay, we're here for UFC 287. I'm glad Dana White shut it down. Ask about UFC 287. That's what's important. That's what we're here for. You've got some of the biggest stars in the game up on stage, and you want to ask about the WWE. Who cares, dude? Enough, okay? Anyways, now, the first thing I noticed that was absolutely bonkers, okay, was why the fuck... Was Israel Adesanya wearing a dog collar? I don't care if he says, I'm a dog and I'm about to be unleashed. Dude, imagine going through those steps, okay? You're in the hotel room. You go, yup, I'm going to put this on in the mirror. You put it on. You're looking at yourself. You go, yup, looks good. Let's go. I'm a dog. I'm about to be unleashed. Really, dude? Really, dude? Are you a five-year-old playing dress-up or what the fuck? That reminded me of, I can't remember the name of the movie. There was a movie where Channing Tatum, okay, was like decked out in fucking dominate, dominatrix gear or whatever. And he had on a dog collar and a leash and Danny McBride was his owner. And it's a Seth Rogen movie. I can't remember what it was called. It wasn't that good, but had some funny moments. That's what it made me think of immediately. You don't look cool, dude. That looks stupid. How the fuck can people actually... Do, like? Uh, 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 and if anybody talks shit, his fans are going to say that we're insecure. Because, because their fucking idol is up on stage wearing half of a sundress and a dog collar. Huh? Okay. I literally wrote out a bunch of notes for a video that I was going to do. Giving Israel Adesanya props for one thing uh, specifically. And I had written it all out and I was planning on doing it this afternoon. He makes it really hard to say nice things about him. I've been shitting on him all week. Okay. Basically, essentially. I mean, not like crazily. But I've been take you know, criticism. Because the mainstream MMA media, the UFC, ESPN, like Fox, BT Sports, all the shit. The way that they cover it, they are dick riding. So... I think that, one, they're incorrect with a lot of the things that they're saying. Two, Alex Pajeda deserves some shine. Three, Israel Adesanya's cringe as shit, dude. And I was doing a video, or I was going to do a video. I'm still going to do it, but because I thought of the idea, I made the thumbnail and all that shit, and I thought it was funny. But he makes it really hard, okay, to, 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 to say nice things about him. He just does. I mean... I would imagine that even his fans, his rider eye fans, what looked at that and were like, what the fuck? And they're like, dude, we got to go defend you on Instagram now? Really, dude? Very strange. The second thing that I thought was fucking weird is Dana White turned from Mr. Free Speech into Mr. Censorship like that. Snap of a finger, drop of a hat. All of a sudden, fucking journalists aren't allowed to ask certain questions. And at first, I was like, dude, why are you getting so worked up about it? It's not that big of a deal. Um, it was not even like a scuffle. There was no like physical altercation involved whatsoever. You had Masvidal's weirdo fucking friend lifting up his shirt, flexing his abs and shit. You, you know what I mean? Like, there was nothing real. But 
that being said, um, I realized about halfway through the press conference, I went, oh, Jorge Masvidal has like charges pending, right? He said it himself, multiple felonies and pend- like lawsuits that are ongoing and shit like that. The last thing they need is a fucking guy who will actually go and do something. We know he will. He's done it multiple times. He fucking sucker punched Leon Edwards. Allegedly sucker punched Colby Covington or whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? And um, we know that he will. Like, that's a guy where. So I was thinking, like, why is this such a big deal? Because I remember pretty recently, I think last time Israel Adesanya fought, I think, actually, in November, Patty Pimblett. Maybe that was in December. Either way, Patty Pimlet, and that was not Israel Adesanya's card, my bad. It was uh, Jan Blachowicz and Uncle Iev. Anyways, dude, doesn't matter. Ilya Toporia and Patty Pimlet were going back and forth pretty aggressively to the point where uh, Patty Pimlet went and stood, like, walked over to him, you know what I mean? And they weren't fighting. They weren't even fighting in the same weight class. He let that shit go on. Sean O'Malley. And when he was fighting, fuck, who was it, dude? Pedro Munoz, maybe. Cody Garbrandt was fighting on that same card. They went and did like a face-off thing and we're talking shit to each other. Dana White didn't, didn't ax that shit, right? It's because Jorge Masvidal, unlike those other guys, will actually do something because he's crazy, okay? And he's got a lot of money, so like, what's one fight? Anyways, also, dude... That would ruin the entire fucking event. If something like that actually happened and the cops had to show up and arrest Jorge Masvidal, that totally fucks the event over. Um, So I kind of understand him getting worked up and not wanting that uh, being brought up because it would just escalate things. They would start going back and forth and screaming at each other. And also, they're both in very interesting fights. Talk about Gilbert and... You know what I mean? The MMA media... um, And fuck YouTubers too. I mean, I do it as well. They really grasp onto, like, drama shit. And uh, it's kind of cringe at times. And especially when you've got all these guys up here. Like, give them the shine they deserve. Jorge Masvidal's fighting Gilbert Burns, not Kevin Holland. Talk about that, okay? Enough. But it was weird to see Dana go from Mr. Free Speech to just straight up, like, shutting down questions. Like, yelling at them, dude. It reminded me of uh, when Ariel Hawani, I think it was, was bugging Nick Diaz about not showing up for fucking whatever it was. He goes, well, he's fucking here now. Stop asking about it. Um, I'm glad Adrian Yanez got to be up there, okay? Because he deserves a bit of shine, I think, at this point. He's had many good performances. He is a contender series guy, but he was a few seasons ago, so he's kind of vetted um, a little bit at this point. This will absolutely be his toughest test, though. And then by association, of course, Rob Font is up there as well, and I think that he deserves shine like that also. Um, journalists continued to ask questions, even after Dana White had yelled at them and told Kevin Holland not to answer it. And Kevin Holland just kept saying, like, you guys are going to get me in trouble. Fuck off, basically. Um, But besides that, there were so many other bad questions. This press conference, if I'm being honest, was pretty fucking lackluster. Um, Like, I kind of zoned out for a little bit, and then I went, fuck, and I had to go back and uh, listen to the parts that I zoned out during. But the one guy that asked uh, Alex... Pajeda, will this be a physical or a psychological fight? Okay. I know that there is absolutely a mental side to fighting. Like 100%. With that being said, though, they are not playing fucking chess. Okay. They're just not. You can, like, compare it to chess, but it's not the same. It's a fight. By definition... It will be physical. So I thought it was really silly of them to fucking ask that. Like, of course it's going to be physical, you fucking muppet. It's a fight. Huh? You buffoon, dude. Enough of that, okay? Bad question, in my opinion. Um, Anyways, dude. Alex Pajeda, I think, in my opinion, has the mindset that Israel Adesanya should have... um, Maybe with a few minor adjustments, but uh, the meta, okay? He says he doesn't even think about the first three fights. Like, these don't matter. I'm focused on this one, right? I'm not not stuck in the past. They don't matter. And then he said, but I know Izzy's going to be thinking about them. And he's right. He is, clearly, dude. How could you not? How could you not? That's part of the video that I'm going to be doing on Israel Adesanya tomorrow morning that is 
actually positive because I just want to balance it out a little bit, dude. I've tipped the scales way over here. One video will still just make it like that. But either way, dude. Um, Jorge Monsvidal went off in fucking Spanish for a really long time. I heard him say Venezuela. I heard him say Cuba. I heard him say, I don't know, a bunch of different countries. And then he started chanting, let's go, Brandon, which I also thought was pretty funny. Um, a good chunk of the crowd got behind him. Of course, they're in Florida, you know. And by the way, I'm not saying I disagree with that sent, uh, sentiment whatsoever. If I just did, I think I did like kind of an eye roll there, but that's not what I meant to do. I thought it was funny. Good shit. Good shit, Florida. Okay. Um, right. Okay. I, I, I just, I was, I'm, I'm looking at my notes here. I literally can't get over the dog collar. I can't get over that. Why would you do that? I, it's so cringe, dude. He repeated the eight mile shit too. How do his fans defend him? If you go look at the posts on Instagram, there are a lot of people that seem to have brains in their head and they're like, this guy's cringe as shit, dude, because it's pretty obvious. And then people say, oh, you calling everything cringe is cringe. No, wearing a dog collar, okay, and saying it's because you're a dog who's about to be unleashed is fucking cringe, first of all. You can unleash a fucking dog with its collar on, okay? You should have had a leash then because you should have had Eugene Behrman walk you out with a fucking leash. Because once you let the dog off, the leash is when it's unleashed, literally, okay? Not fucking uncollared, you imbecile. Dude, I couldn't believe he wore that. What the fuck? The dress, too. And I'm sorry if it's some traditional African garb. I super don't give a fuck. He looked ridiculous, okay? He looked like fucking... Who's that guy, dude? I don't even know who it is, but he wears dresses to fucking awards, award shows and shit. And no, I'm not insecure, you look like a fool, okay? Sorry, but you do, you know? Especially with, like, the wife beater on top. I would imagine that's not traditional garb, okay? I don't know what the fuck he was wearing down below. It was very strange. Anyways, dude. I also, this is the last point um, on the press conference itself. I find it, like, ridiculous and funny at the same time that Israel Adesanya is being so grumpy and, like, bitchy towards everybody right? Like the media and shit included in that. And mostly the media is who he's being bitchy towards. Um, they're like, why are you acting like they aren't all in your favor? Like, I don't get it. He's acting like in his brain, he's going, everybody's been talking shit about me. I got to go there and be a cunt. I'm going to raise my, his, like, no, dude, media members don't say bad shit about you fucking ever. That's why it's annoying. They're all acting like you didn't lose, you won, and then you got caught at the end. That's what they're acting like. Like, no one's, none, none of the media members are doing anything bad. Also, it's their fucking job. Also, dude, you make the kind of money that you make because the media. Point blank, period, dude. If tickets and shit don't sell, like, you need media for this shit. Fucking stop being dicks to them. I also thought it was funny when, um, so I lied about that being the last point. Alex Pajeda, just like stone cold, literally acting like he's just bullshitting with friends when he said, uh, oh, he makes me laugh. He legitimately cracked a smile. He seems to be, uh, becoming more comfortable with like talking and shit like that. I think it's funny. I think what it is is that Glover's uh, personality might be rubbing off on him a little bit because he used to be, like, ultra fucking serious all the time. And Glover's a super, you know, happy-go-lucky kind of guy. So I think that that might be, uh, might be par partially the reason anyways. Um, now we're going to talk about the face-offs. If I missed a point, I'm sorry. Uh, these were what I thought were noteworthy anyways. But face-offs, okay? First of all, dude, Raul Rosas Jr., his jaw is even fucking crazier from the side, okay? His profile is fucking nuts. If they took a mug shot, they would need, like, an extra wide lens or some shit. I swear to God, that shit is wild, my guy. That is a big target. He should probably grow a beard, uh, you know, eventually, if he can. I don't know. He's fucking 18, but, you know, that's nuts to me. That's a huge, huge, huge jaw. Okay. It's probably strong as fuck, too. Um, Adrian Yanez and Rob Font were up next. They were both very respectful, very hyped. They turned over to 
uh, Dana White and said, like, you know, it's going to be fight of the night or something like that. Um, I missed Kevin Holland and Santiago. The, uh, there was nothing really interesting about that one. But at the very end, right before, like, Santiago had already walked off. Kevin Holland uh, hung back for a second, and now his back was facing the camera. So you, I couldn't lip read uh, w- what it was that he said, but I saw Dana White say something like, yeah, and he, like, made a face. It th- th- Obviously, we don't know again. I can't lip read. It seems like Kevin Holland was like, are we good? You know what I mean? Because Dana got so fucking riled up and angry about that shit. Um, that, that would be my guess anyways. Um, Gilbert Burns, dude. This guy won the fashion contest for sure beats Izzy because he's not wearing a fucking dress and a dog collar like a retard. He's, dude, cute, okay, cute. He's wearing fucking overalls and his little baby fro, it's cute. He looks like a little kid because he's got like no facial hair either. It's funny, man. Uh, he won the fashion contest. Fuck them all. Fuck all of the, the rest of them. He ha- he uh, He won that shit for sure. And him and uh, Jorge seem to be pretty respectful towards one another. They were, fuck, man, I forgot about a few points. They were booing when, uh, dude, the media can't get over uh, Colby Covington getting the next title shot, which is funny. But uh, Jorge and Gilbert kind of looked at each other over the desk back and forth and coordinated a staggering boo from either side that was going on. But anyways, um, dude. The face-off between the main event, Alex Pajeda, Pajeda, and Israel Adesanya, apparently, because he fucking changes the way he pronounces it almost every time out, depending on what mood he's in. It's like his mood ring, dude. First, it's Adesanya. Second, it's Adesanya. And then there's, like, whatever the fuck Ariel Hawani says. Um, I'm not a body language expert. He seemed to be like, breathing very fucking heavy and, like, almost uncontrollably. Um, I could see his shoulders moving and his, like, chest kind of popping, but he wasn't, like, rolling his shoulders. Like, you couldn't see the rest of the muscles that would be involved in that fucking action moving at all. It was literally from his breathing. Like, he seemed, like, I don't know, man. I don't know what that means. I'm just saying what I saw. He looked to be having a hard time fucking controlling himself. And Alex Pajeda stood there, fucking dry ice, my guy. Dry ice Pajeda, okay? And Dana White, when he was trying to break them up, because, like, not like they got into a scuffle, but they had taken their pictures. He was trying to separate them so they could do the front-facing shots. Um, Dude, he had to fucking... He, like, put his head on Pajeda's shoulder, like, he nuzzled him, and then had to push his... Use his own body weight... To move Pajeda's one fucking arm. He, Dana White, did anybody see that? He literally, like, put his head on his shoulder and, like, moved him aside like that. Because he's so fucking strong that one arm of Alex Pajeda took all Dana White to move, okay? Insane. Now, that's about it, I think. Um, kind of lackluster, dude. We didn't have any, like, super fun characters there. And Israel Adesanya is trying not to trash talk. He said that again, you know, fuck the talk. You want me to talk? I'll talk, but fuck the talk. You all want to hear me fight? Okay, dude, enough. Anyways, tomorrow morning, I will be putting out a video on a characteristic, I guess, of Israel Adesanya that I think is worthy of respect. And I'm going to do that because I've been shitting on him a lot. And yeah, so so are, so is a lot of MMA YouTube, but... but uh, I just thought of this thing, and, and so I wrote it out. I, th- I think that it's worth noting, and yeah, man, keep an eye out for that. Like and subscribe. I'll thank you in advance for doing so. Greatly appreciate it. Dude, you guys have gotten my like ratio, like, almost to 100%. When I first started making videos, there were a few videos that really pissed some people off. I got fucking ratioed. It dropped to like, I don't know, 78% or something like that. But because you guys like my video so much, like I'll have 20 fucking likes off of 40 views. It's, it's awesome. I really appreciate it. Um, it's brought it back up to like 93%. So thank you for that. And I'll thank you in advance for the subscription, please. Okay. And I'll see you at the next video tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.